Okay, now we're going to look at how we would determine the products in an aqueous solution that undergoes electrolysis. But before we do, I just realized that I failed to um, show how the electrons flow in that example number one. So remember, we always said that they're going to flow from the anode to the cathode. So I just want to show that they still flow in that direction. So that's the last little thing I wanted to show. Um, now we move on to, here we go, half reactions for water. So we said that in an aqueous substance, you're going to have both your salt and you're going to have your water to worry about. So there might be the possibility that, you have to, um, that your water is going to be what is reduced or oxidized instead. So in order to figure that out, we have to be able to write some half reactions for water. And yes, you guys get the joy of memorizing these. And I use the word memorize. I don't memorize these. I actually work them out because I don't have any room in my brain to memorize anything else. So I know that if you have water, when water decomposes, it just breaks down to form hydrogen and oxygen. We all know that. So, um, and that's not balanced, but we're going to balance it when we do the half reactions. So I'm going to show my half reactions as water breaking down to form hydrogen and water breaking down to form oxygen. So now I'm just going to go through that balancing process. I look at my first half, my hydrogens look good, but my oxygens don't. It looks like I'm going to have to add something different. Now remember, this is, not, don't remember, we haven't said this yet, but this is not quite the same as balancing redox the way we've done it in the past. Instead, think about the ions that are involved in water. You've got hydrogen ions and you've got hydroxide ions. So those are going to be the two things that we add to help us balance these uh, reactions. So in the first one, I see that I'm going to have to add some um, oxygens and I'm going to do that by adding these hydroxide ions. And it looks like I would just add um, if I add one hydroxide, then my hydrogens are off. So I would have to do, I have an odd number, so I do this, and I forgot that. So I uh, balance like this where I get, now I have four hydrogens and two oxygens. So that looks balanced. But now, of course, my electrons are not balanced anymore. So I've got a zero charge on the left-hand side, and I've got a negative two on the right-hand side, so I have to add two electrons. And then as far as my water goes um, with my oxygen, I look and I see I have two hydrogens on the left and one oxygen on the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a two, a coefficient of a two, to get my oxygens to balance, and my hydrogens are off. So now here I'm going to add those hydrogen ions. And then um, what's off now is my charge, so I need to add four electrons here. So just to kind of highlight something here, we said that we're going to add hydroxide ions to one and hydrogen ions to the other. So that's what we ended up doing right there. Also, notice that um, oh, there was something I wanted to mention. Oh, I wanted to mention what is being oxidized and what's being reduced. So here we see that we're gaining our electrons, so this is our reduction half, and here we are losing electrons, so this is going to be our oxidation half. It is up to you if you want to memorize this or just be able to work through this each time. Maybe you just want to work through it and write it at the top of your paper or something when you have a test on this. But you do need to know these half reactions, the reduction half and the oxidation half for water. So now, with that being said, we can go ahead and do an example problem where we have that situation. It says, what are the products of the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride? So now, not only do we have sodium chloride to worry about, we've also got some water in this uh, container as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my container, draw my two electrodes, that are connected to a battery and I will call this positive and this neg negative, positive and negative. We're going to make this platinum. I'm just going to do that every time. 
That's the easy way to do it. And now let's think about what's in our container. We've got aqueous sodium chloride. Sounds like we've got some sodium ions, we've got some chloride ions, and we've got some water in there as well. Um, we can go ahead, maybe I'll do that off to the right over here, that we can write our half reactions. We know that as far as that sodium chloride goes, we've got a reduction half that looks like this. And we've got an oxidation half that looks like this. We've also got water to worry about. So our reduction half for water, we just did this on the previous slide. It looks like this, water going to, um, actually with two electrons here. We've got water going to hydrogen plus two hydroxide ions. And then over here for our oxidation half, we've got water going to oxygen. And then we had to do some balancing, so we got some four hydrogen ions. This became a two, and we've got uh, four electrons. Sorry, that was a little sloppy, but um, hopefully you can see what we've got going on. This is our reduction in both of these half reactions. We are gaining electrons in both of these half reactions. We are losing electrons, so that's oxidation. So we can do a little bit of labeling. We know that at the positive electrode, that's going to be for a voltaic, for an electrolytic cell. The positive is going to be your anode. And we know that the negative is going to be the cathode. Oxidation always occurs at the anode. Reduction always occurs at the cathode. So the question is, what are our products? So if we were to go back to our list of rules, that we saw on the front of our paper. It said no group 1A or 2A metal will be reduced in an aqueous solution. So the question is, sodium, is it a 1A or 2A? Is it an alkali metal or an alkaline earth metal? And the answer is yes, it is. So we see that this is not going to be reduced in an aqueous solution. And the rest of that sentence is that water will be reduced instead. So I see I've got my water reaction, my water reduction half written there. What are my products for my water reduction half? I've got hydrogen, gas, and I've got hydroxide ions. So those are the products that I have in that reaction. Then I can think about the oxidation half. In that half, I have chlorine. Well, I go back to my notes. And my notes tell me that no polyatomic ion will be oxidized in an aqueous solution. Well, guess what? Chlorine's not a polyatomic ion, so we don't have to worry about that. In, in this case, the chlorine will be oxidized. So we get chlorine gas that is a product. And we will not have the water being oxidized because it doesn't fall into that uh, case of a polyatomic ion. So the final answer for something like this would be your products are going to be hydrogen gas, hydroxide ions, and chlorine gas. So you've got gases being produced at both of your electrodes. So you're going to have some bubbling going on at both of those electrodes. And I won't forget this time, as far as our electron flow goes, it's always fat cat, always flows from the anode to the cathode. So that's what it's going to look like.